Right, hello and welcome to another video. And this one we're going to do something a little bit different because we, we are at Nented and we're going to do a surface explore and show you some of the mines around here and show you footage from our prior explores of uh, these mines. So, first of all, in the car park, in the left-hand corner here, we have the infamous Ramp Girl, which is one of the first mines I ever explored. So Ramp Girl was uh, started in about 1690 when they started working the vein, possibly at the surface on through shafts. The uh, horse level you see here wasn't started until around 1736 by the Greenwich Hospital. Uh, this follows the uh, Scaleburn Moss vein, the Fairhill vein, and then it goes on to the Ramp Girl vein. Uh, this was all sold to the London Lead Company in 1745, which saw significant development in the mine with uh, massive stopes, which you can see in some of our explorers. Uh, during the period 1703 to 1886, this mine produced some 140,000 tonnes of lead. By the late 19th century, uh, most of the lead ore above the water table was depleted. During the period of 1899 to 1921, the Vale Montague Company reworked the veins for zinc ore. The mine also connects through to Colclough, Middleclough and Longclough mines, which for some periods used the access here for haulage, because this had a rail system which they didn't have. This also connects through to Scaleburn, uh, although that is, again, a separate mine which only used this for its rail infrastructure. Uh, some of the famous parts of this are the brewery shaft, uh, a 300 foot deep shaft. got a few other large shafts and some uh, massive stopes in this one. Also if you go into Scaleburn you've also got the horse whimsy up there and some other amazing places but let's move on to Capelclough. Just while we're here uh, we've been here so many times and only on our last explore which is probably the 20th or 30th <laughs> visit here we noticed this sign on there well this inscription 19 J.H.E. Hutchinson, 1900. Nice. So we're gonna go over there through Capelclough. Right, so just across the uh, river from Ramgill is Capelclough. Notorious this one for being rough. It is quite deadly in here because you go through the first part, but the shale is uh, not nice. It's like sheets the size of pool tables waited to come down and at the time of recording there there's actually been a collapse in here and it's actually cut off the main mine from this direction but you could in theory I wouldn't recommend it because it does even with the shale clear which you'll take you an hour or so to get through the shale a lot of crawling uh, you can go from this one all the way up the top of the valley to small clough and then down to Ramp Gill, Brownlee Hill, all the way around the valley, theoretically to Hags Mine. Get out of the other end of Cavcliffe. You've got several hours 
in water and you're quite often swimming uh, yeah and the airspace can be very small so this is a highly dangerous mine do not try it unless you know somebody who knows what they're doing there's actually a second little adit further up I'm just about to see it there that was because the rail coming here to turn onto the dressing floor which is down there was too tight so they had to build a second adit to get that uh, angle in for the carts yeah so this was worked on and off uh, until the early 1900s when the Vale Montague company worked the uh, mines here for zinc so this is one of the ones they worked so we're gonna go on up the valley As we come further up the valley, uh, we've got several buildings here. This one on the left hand side is what's known as the assay house. These days it's used as the bunkhouse, you can stay there. Uh, but originally it was used for you bring your samples here and they'd work out how much mineral content was in the samples. So you work out how much you're going to be paid for the ore. On the right hand side, is uh, what's believed to have been a mine shop and workshop so the uh, miners would have stayed here during the week perhaps gone home at the weekend and that one actually up until i believe the 80s was uh, a bit of a wreck but it was restored uh, to its uh, present glory and beyond that you can see what's left of the mill okay i stand possibly corrected uh, I've got a sign at the back. This building was probably once the main peat store for the site. Peat was used in the ore halves of the smelting process. That makes sense because it's right opposite the smelt mill. It needed to be kept dry. In 1897, the building was converted into a lodging house. So I was right, it was used for the, the miners as well. Uh, for miners bought in from surrounding dales and later for foreign labour. The upper floor was for sleeping, downstairs were the kitchen, washing, drying and eating areas. So yeah, with it being right opposite the smell mill, that actually makes sense. And here we have a, uh, a mucking machine, which was uh, relatively recently restored, because this wasn't here when I first started exploring. But when it did appear, rust free, but that was here. Now it's started to rust. Right, what you can sort of see here is the smelt mill. This was built initially in 1737 and in 1745 redesigned by the London Lead Company. Most of the buildings here were actually intact until the 1970s uh, when they started to demolish it to use the stonework for other buildings. That's something you wouldn't find happening these days and it's now protected triple SI but yes back in the 70s you could take this apart and use it as you wanted luckily they stopped doing that up the top there you can see the wheel pit which we'll go look at in a moment so this was used for processing the raw ore and smelting it into lead etc there was another processing mill down the bottom as well uh, but this is the main historic one those walls there are 1.7 meters thick and up to six meters high. That's a substantial building. So here you can see what I think are the ore bings. So each one of these sections will belong to a different team of miners. They put their ore in there so they know who's uh, all which belong to which team so they can work out how much they'd earned. You can also see the remains of some uh, top of a cart there and the chateau of a cart there 
There's a few more rem cart remains. There. So here, just the side of the smelt mill, you can see the remains of some machinery. You've got a cog here with the iron rod. I have no idea what these were. There's a pipe, I assume that was for water. And uh, some pieces of wood. I'm not sure entirely what they were for, but that archer see down in that footage earlier, there's the remains of another one here. So it's been taken down, but at least it survives in some form, which is good. So then just up the valley, we've got the large water wheel, which drove the pumps that forced poisonous fumes from the smelt wheel furnaces through the condenser. This magnificent wheel measured approximately 50 feet in diameter and at the time said to be the second largest in the country. workshop or a very small mine shop for what is known as cars mine and this is uh, the tourist mine so if you're not a mine explorer this is one you can come and safely explore when it's open you can see here we've got two carts nicely on display with the rails going into the mine itself uh, I believe even in the late 90s this was closed and rough but now it's been concreted over lit properly and you can go in with a tour guide and they'll show you the joys of the mine the mine's actually in two sections you've got the tourist mine then beyond that you've got the original mine which obviously is not prepped for tourists but we have been there it's been a long time ago so the footage is uh, primitive compared to what we film now but you can see beyond that in there uh, not the back end is not an easy place to access. You need to use shafts and SRT to get there. But it is quite a large mine with a lot of flats. Right, further on, and you can see the vastness of these tips here. These just go on and on and on up to small cloth. <laughs> own tips as far as I'm aware might be part of that and you can see these have been eroded insanely in the main in the years since so these would have been much larger originally at the top there you got the coal level uh, also in some documents referred to as Hodgson's high level although Hodgson's high level was also known as Capricorn's high level so it's a bit confusing but present day that doesn't go very far it's a wide entrance, but it doesn't go far. And even in the original maps, it doesn't go very far. So we'll continue down here to see the waterfall, etc. Right, so further up, we have the waterfall, which at the moment, despite the amount of rain we've had lately, is quite calm. And to the left there is the entrance, the rear entrance to the uh, car's tourist mine. There is also a cavity back there, which you can see on the drone footage here. Not sure where that goes. Uh, if you do know, let me know. But yeah, we only found that relatively recently. And as we swing around here, just hidden back here is another level. Now I have been in there but it, uh, once, but it dropped straight into a shaft. But apparently that is uh, a substantial level back there originally. It's been heavily eroded since. 
Once again, you can see the massive size of these tubs. to Carl's mine and down here we've got the uh, waterfall and just to the right of the waterfall is an, another unnamed level now it's not a level that I'd like to go into because one slip of that land and that could be buried but fortunately we have stood in front of it and shone a torch down there and it is very much blocked just shortly in but yeah I wouldn't like to go in there that must have been fun to work in when this river was uh, in full flow. Obviously, it must have uh, predated the massive tips that are now sitting on top of it. Well, you can see back down the valley there. Yep, this is as close as I can get without me wellies on. Uh, we can see here it's uh, collapsed and uh, been up there and it's very much collapsed. The strange thing I've noticed is this pipe underwater here. I wonder if it's draining this uh, cavity from Carl's mine. Don't know. Right, now we're at the top of the waterfall. No, we didn't climb up it, we went up the bubble bath. Uh, but now we're going into the rounds of small cloth mine. You can see some of the uh, dressing floors and stuff there as the tips start. and all the people. Okay, in this area, before we get to Smallclough, we can only get to Thompson's level and uh, Cabalclough High level. This is Thompson's level, which is actually just opposite Smallclough level. Uh, this is obviously the same age as that, but just inside there, about 20 meters, uh, you can actually see, I think that's the shaft up there, but that shaft has collapsed and they've been trying to get through that for a long time. Now I've actually seen plans of this and it actually goes through, so as a plan show, to Cabalclough High Level. So it'd be interesting once they actually manage to get through that one. Because of the danger in there, that one's actually locked off. So you can't go in there. But talking of interesting mines, let's go up and have a look at Cabalclough High Level. So here we are at Cabalclough High. Now, this is obviously the same age as the other one. And uh, this is interesting because the first 500 feet you go in here, I don't recommend, as obviously, as always, I don't recommend you go in here unless you know what you're doing. But the first 500 feet of this, beyond this uh, initial stone arching, is concrete lined. And you are stooping, you just see it there but you're going to be stooping all the way for 500 feet and then it opens out into shale so it's not the most pleasant of places although you can see in the footage what it's like 
this was used for drainage of some of the wastewater from the processes from the bog shaft I believe which is why it got concrete lined later in life for that purpose but yes this goes uh, quite far but it's as you see in the footage not nice so keep out of this one as well keep out of all of them but particularly keep out of this one So, a little extra info, but Capelclough High actually has two entrances. This is the second one, and it's the one we usually use to get in there because this one, like that one, leads, as you can see in the footage, to a flight of steps going down into the mine itself. Very, very slippy steps. So, yeah, it's not recommended. But why they built these steps, as I'm thinking, I imagine, because there might have been a lot of water coming out of the other one when they were using it for drainage, so this is a way to bypass that. I do not know for sure. Let me know in the comments if you do. If I do get anything wrong with them, let me know in the comments. We're now going to go back over to get old Capel, Capel Clough, Small Clough. And before we go down to Small Clough, you can actually see here, the, you've got the portal, then the path, and then there's a little dip in the ground. That's a collapse that kept this place closed until the 60s, because uh, although this was initially the main entrance, in later life, uh, the ore dropped down into Ramp Gill, so this fell out of use for a very long time. And that was collapsed, blocking it up, until they dug it out in the 60s to get back in to uh, try and do some more mining. Right, so here's a, a site that's familiar to any people who have watched our channel and all the YouTube channels. This is the entrance to the small club. Perhaps one of the most explored and largest mines and picturesque mines in the British Isles. This bugger was started in uh, 1770 and it's actually the first mine I actually explored. You can see the video if you go on the channel. My first video is my first explore. So it was started in 1770 to explore the Hanging Shores vein west of the Nent vein, if that makes sense to you. But the initial attempt was soon abandoned. Uh, you can see details of this in the actual explore videos referenced here. Uh, in 1787, it was restarted by an agent for the London Lead Company who focused on small cloth, cloth cross vein, which produced an immense amount of ore. You see here the flats that created these go for over, I believe, half a kilometre and uh, we had immense success with that. They worked the middle clough first and second sun veins, the long clough and the great cross veins. In the late 1800s to early 1900s, uh, it was worked by the Nented and Tyndale Lead and Zinc Company and the Vale Montague Zinc Company. Uh, most operations there ended by 1900, although I believe that period went on to 1920. In 1960, uh, they also reopened it, which got through that collapse uh, in an attempt to get more out. But I believe only small operations uh, resulted from that. That was 1963. So 1988 is when it was reopened and uh, mine explorers have been digging it out and get regaining access to it ever since. Inside there is the famous ballroom, which is a very large stoke, rectangle, cube, rectangle, cube, rectangle, thing. You know what I mean. You can see it in the video here. Uh, in 1901, they actually took VIPs down there. I think probably the uh, VIPs for the company and local dignitaries down. And they had a ball in the ballroom, Christmas meal. I believe it was, 
in the ballroom. And when they actually broke back into the ballroom in the 80s, you actually find crockery and plates still in there from that event. Uh, yes, I'll put links to the videos down below if you want to explore more of this on our channel. And just to the left there is the, uh, the shop where the miners would have lived. And here's a picture actually showing some of the miners gathered for a photo shoot outside the mine. I believe this was 1850. One thing you'll find quite often as you walk up this valley is these uh, one known as leeks. These were dug in the cupboard to provide water to uh, the mines. There's one actually running to a reservoir down there, which is quite Lots of these running through the valley. Right, as we come up the valley, we're coming into the area of Middlecloth Mine, and here is what is known as the Compressor House. Now, there's two theories on this. There's the real theory, of what it actually is, and there's my production assistance theory. So, the real theory is, <laughs> which actually was, was to uh, it was, would take the water. You can see it actually coming from a pipe just up there. It comes from the big dam the top reservoir at the top which you can see in the drone footage here. Uh, they would take that and use that to compress air which would be used to drive the machinery of the mines. Or there's the alternative theory under my production assistant has just come up with that uh, we often find ourselves going in the mines and having to crouch over because the mines seem quite low so he thinks that what the compressor house did was compress the miners to make them smaller so they fit through these mines and wouldn't have to pay them so much so yes take whichever theory you think is better <laughs> yeah just on the other side of the compressor house you can see the pipe there which took the uh, the water into it and there's a example of pipeline just here the side of it so there we go another important part of the puzzle Right, just before we get to Meadowclough, uh, the valley does split off to the left there. There are a couple of levels up there, which we've not explored yet, but we have seen with the drone. But we're not going to look at those in this video. We're going to concentrate on the main stuff. So, onwards to Meadowclough. So just around the corner from there, here's the Capoclough portal itself, and that's its... Uh, imagine that's the explosive store. It's too small to be a shop, so... Yeah, so Middlecliffe, uh, again, same age as the other ones. It does have these two curious little stone things either side. I don't think the portal's, but there's one either side. I don't know. Uh, but this is the same age, again, as the other mines. And it was built, dug, in the shale, so it's quite rough. And it was mainly to ventilate the mines beneath. Uh, it does have its own workings, uh, but it does have some very impressive sumps because of its uh, nature. Now, access to this is blocked off. Sorry, A, the nature of the mine is quite dangerous, and B, because there is uh, carvings in there which need to be protected because they are quite vulnerable. Now you can see, up until the late 20th century, this was actually collapsed for a distance, and you can see the collapse above it there, so, yes. But it does go quite a way, uh, following the route of the mines beneath to ventilate. of firestone now. So this would come after fire clay rock which was used in bricks and stuff. And as you can see it's not very accessible. 
even worse than last time I went to me. But down there is, uh, it has been explored, not by us. As you can see there, it's full of water, which actually goes up to the roof. You can see it reflecting. So it actually goes up to the roof. And uh, it was drained and explored, but it was an oakery hellhole in there. So we have not explored it. Been a bit of a collapse, but that could be cleared out if we wanted to explore it. Maybe someday. Right, on to the top. And just after that, we reach the top of the valley, almost, which is where the Nantahead Valley ends and the next valley over starts with its own actual mines that head back into this valley. And the reservoir at the top here, which fed water to the mine operations here. 